Oh, look at the butterflies. Yeah. This is the soft side of Jim Charlie. Look, there's a white one. That was black yeah. and yellow. Look at that one. There's black and blue. Walking with the woman he loves during a beautiful part of the day. <laughs> <laughs> but for the sake of this story, we're interested in Charlie's other side, his other passion. As a kid, I always loved football. Maybe that's why I became a policeman now that I think about it. You wait for somebody else to make a mistake and you capitalize on it. This former cop and retired district judge now settles back in his modest Chester County home and moves into another chamber of sorts, one that pays tribute to his favorite game. Well, here it is. A public servant who stood for 50 years in the middle, helping protect and define what society measures as right and wrong. Now owns one of the country's most complete collections of a sport that has been linked to battle. I think the helmet in football, more so than any pieces of equipment in any other sport, is the trademark, the symbol of the team. You know that your team is playing. It's, I was a police officer for 40 years, and it's said that that job is 90% uh, boredom and 10% terror. That's what I like about football. His walls are proof that his collection is pretty much complete. But this is the baby that started it all, this one right here. After three decades of begging, bargaining, and buying. Well, I went back after the season and bought the helmet for 40 bucks. It was the start of my collection. He now owns a lid from every team in the NFL, and each one has a story. This helmet was worn by a fellow named uh, John Alt. He played for the Kansas City Chiefs. He was an offensive guard, and you can tell that's the way the helmet got hurt. It was the last football game ever played in the old Candlestick Park. What's unique about it is dirt from Candlestick Park is on the helmet. So this is a helmet that never gets cleaned. This is my latest Eagles helmet. But Charlie's collection has always been centered on his favorite team, beginning with his hometown hero. My dad took me to Scheib Park in 1947, play the New York Giants. And Steve Van Buren was in that game and he scored 11 or 1200 touchdowns or something. He became my idol, absolute idol. I even thought I looked like him at the time. I had curly hair and a high forehead and I didn't have his nose. And I used to walk around as a little kid pushing my nose in trying to make me look like Steve Van Buren. Now this is the logo that I'm talking about for Jimmy Johnson. I think this one means something to me because I appreciate defensive football so much and he was such a great coach and from all I've heard and read, a, a super person. This is 48. Looking for a way to capture some of those gridiron glory days, Charlie scoured collections from around the country grabbing the these hats of history and, the and putting them on, the on his wall. Being able to uh, collect a little piece of history attaches me to whatever the history represents. So for example, there's a Kansas City helmet. I'm a piece of the Kansas City Chiefs. There's a uh, Seahawks helmet. I'm a piece of the Seahawks and a big piece of the Eagles. Jim, thanks for flying with the Eagles, Andy Reid. I have a big While the head. jury is still Let's out on I when and where this on. collection will end up after he lets it free, this judge of football history just hopes that someone else gets as much as a thrill out of it as he has, but only when he's ready. But I'm not ready even to get into that because I'm old, I'm gonna die, but I'm not ready.